The castle was brim with the blessings of Christmas. Not just because festive music ran through the corridors and the pine boughs trimmed every beam. On this St. Stephen's Day, the courtiers had gathered their Christmas treasures and given them to the poor. Now, as the Feast of St. Stephen drew to a close, 70 knights pushed back long wooden tables and offered their hands. 70 noble women lifted the edges of their gowns and glided to meet them. Bathed in the glow of a well-fed fire, good King Wenceslas looked out upon his court. And at the signal of his benevolent smile, their Christmas revelry began. With a nod to his page, King Wenceslas slipped behind the throne into the darkness of his private chamber. The page boy was hungry and weary from waiting. Now can we eat, he complained, sliding to the floor. In time, the king answered, turning away. The king had cared for the boy from his childhood, and soon the boy would be a man. With a wave of sadness, he realized that the blessings of Christmas had already come to his courtiers, but not yet to his loyal page. Was it too late, he wondered? From a tall, narrow window, King Wenceslas watched the sun hang on crimson clouds and die away. He studied the hedge-bound fields and rolling hills, now swallowed up in snow. His eyes narrowed. There, against a row of spidery trees, was a dark speck. A man, perhaps, stooping and searching for wood to warm his family. Come quickly, lad, he called. As the boy struggled to his feet, King Wenceslas seized his hand and dashed up narrow steps to a turret balcony. Look! Do you see him? The king pointed breathlessly. For a moment, the page boy could not speak. Rarely had he seen the world in this way, asleep under a coverlet of white, glistening under a full moon. He would have fallen asleep himself, but for the wonder that was waking within him. When the dark figure moved again, the king guided the boy's gaze. There, in the trees, do you see him now? Yes, yes, the boy answered. And, pressed the king, is he one of the household? Is he one of us? Oh no, sire, said the boy. None of us would be out there. Ooh, what with the freezing cold, and heaven only knows what creatures might be lurking. King Wenceslas took comfort that the boy knew the people of the kingdom, even those who lived far from the castle. He rejoiced that the humble peasant foraging in the snow could very well be the boy's salvation. As before, the king snatched the page boy's hand and led him down a winding staircase. Down, 
down is the way the king mused to himself as they hurried along. In the royal pantry, he tossed the page a satchel and ordered him to fill it. As they worked, the page noticed the king's eyes were wet, though his speaking was giddy like laughter. Hurry, my boy, hurry. Soon, the king and his page boy were following the peasant's tracks. King Wenceslas carried a cord of split logs across his strong shoulders, wrapped tightly to keep them dry, and in each hand, he clutched a heavy cloth sack. Behind him, the page boy bravely struggled under the weight of his own satchel. The boy wondered if he ought to watch for creatures lurking in the shadows, but in his heart, he knew there were none. Indeed, looking into the infinite expanse above, he saw the snowflakes descending like concourses of angels, winging their way down to watch over him and lead him safely along. As the sky cleared, the night air grew colder. The soft blanket of snow that had first enticed the boy now threatened to ensnare him. With every step, its icy surface broke into shards, trapping the boy's feet and turning them into ice. When the boy could no longer feel his toes, he pled with the king for rest and relief. King Wenceslas answered tenderly, as one walking the same path himself. It was a strange invitation to walk in the king's footsteps. At first, the boy struggled to do it. But as before, Wenceslas took his hand and helped him find the path. Soon, the boy was marching boldly behind his master. Miraculously, with each step, his frozen feet began to warm, and the warmth rose within him and gave him strength.
At the edge of the dark forest, a little cottage came into view. Its golden light sparkling on the surface of an ice-bound spring. With a single knock, the king and his page boy were welcomed into the circle of a large and happy family. As guests in the house, they were invited to rest, but the boy would not be still. With the children as his helpers, he fed the fire and set out the unexpected meal. And when all had feasted to fatness, they pushed the little table back and began to sing and dance. From the corner of the cottage, good King Wenceslas watched the boy dance and smiled to himself. The boy was taking the hands of the children and leading each one just as he had been led. Their sweet, innocent laughter was the music of Christmas, filling the room and ringing through the forest. In time, the king and his page boy reluctantly left the warm cottage and ventured once more across the snowy fields. Side by side they strode, now heedless of the cold night air, and the king knew that it was not too late. Now the blessings of Christmas had come to all of his kingdom, because they had come to the boy. Here come Christmas, oh.